before I spoke a word, you were singing over me. You have been so, so good to me. Before I took a breath, you breathed your life in me. so so kind to me Still you love far from me You have been so, so good to me When I felt no worse You paid it all for me You have been so, so
Welcome everyone in person or online. We're glad to spend time with you today with God. If you're with us in person, please be sure to fill out the front of your contact card for our records and for COVID <coughs> regulations. Please write in the date, your names, the contact number, and email. Then check the box if you're new, regular, etc. Uh, please hang onto the card and an offering envelope if you have one to hand in after the service. <coughs> There's a space on the back of the card, and we'll talk about that after the service. If you're watching online, we have a digital connect card on our website, wayoflifechurch.ca. We'd love to hear from you, so please click over after the service and fill one out. I want to say a big thank you to everyone who has given to the capital fund. We have now raised, or now passed, $3,000 in donations. If you're not aware of the goal, we plan to raise $10,000 to create a great children's classroom and then raise another $10,000 as a capital reserve that we can use for urgent needs. This spring, we're moving ahead with the plan to convert our front yard into a community garden. It might take one spring or two to get everything set up, but it all starts with green thumb people who want to get involved. We need a project leader and team members. For more information, contact Pastor Norm Find his contact info on our website at wayoflifechurch.ca. Now I'll invite Kathy Depko to come up. She's going to share with us the third message in a series, Another Side of Hope. Kathy? Well, good morning. Yes, this is the third and final message in a series I've called Another Side of Hope. And in this message, uh, Rose, I want to sum up the series. And I want to look at how to get back some of the energy and the excitement and the oomph, so to speak, that we've been missing in our life over the past few months, especially after the sucker punch of 2020 and the uncertainty that 2021 is offering. Now, I have an idea, but before I begin, let's pray. Lord God, thank you for this opportunity to be able to give your word to your people today. And Lord, I pray that you would open our eyes to the things you want us to know, and that, Lord, you would speak to us, that the things that I bring would not be remembered, only the things of you. In Jesus' name, amen. I heard a joke the other day. I want to share this. One night, while out for supper at a Mediterranean restaurant, my sister-in-law had a question about one of the appetizers. So when the server showed up to take our order, she asked her, where do you get your muscles? The waitress blushed and looked sheepishly at her biceps and quietly answered, cross-training. I wonder if this woman's sister-in-law decided to save the waitress some embarrassment and not ask about the shellfish after all. But speaking of mussels and not shellfish, I want to share something else I learned. I learned that in 2019, the Avengers Endgame was the highest grossing film worldwide of all time, grossing over two and a half billion dollars. It's crazy amount of money. Just absolutely astounding. The 2019 commu computer animated remake of Lion King, in contrast, came in only second at a little over one and a half billion dollars, which is still a lot of money. So I also learned, I was just learning tons before I, as I was researching for this message, I also learned that if Superman and Spider-Man had a fight that Spy Superman would win with one punch. And that if Batman and Superman had a fight that Superman would win, but that if Batman fought Captain America, he'd lose, no, he'd win, and that he'd lose against Thor. See, I'm still learning. Superheroes. Superheroes, they have been loved by young and old alike. 
since 1936, when The Phantom first came on the scene in a comic strip. But why? Why do we love superheroes so much? Is it because of the fantasy of it? Is it because they have powers that we could only dream of? Is it because it's a play out of a spiritual war of good and evil that's always going on around us? What is it about superheroes that makes them so appealing and so different from the rest of us? Well, I noticed there are four outstanding characteristics of superheroes. Number one, they have superhuman powers given to them from an outside source. Two, they use their superhuman powers and strength to win battles against evil forces. They never give up and they always do good. Three, they have special outfits and weapons. Number four, they do not die or they don't stay dead. And I have to admit those are kind of cool characteristics. So it makes me wonder, is our interest in superheroes, at least in part, because somewhere deep inside all of us, we desire to be one? Maybe? Well, if you look at the Oxford Dictionary and what it defines as a superhero, it's a character in a story, a movie, etc., who has unusual strength or power and uses it to help people. Or it says it's a real person who's done something unusually brave to help someone. So according to this definition, every person who's received a medal of bravery is not only a hero, but a superhero. And if you look it up, in Canada, we have our fair share of actual superheroes, which is kind of exciting, actually. But if you look at the stories of superheroes in the movies and the comic books, you're going to find that they're different from what the Oxford Dictionary defines. These superheroes, their whole life is built around being a superhero. It's not just a tremendous and honorable act of bravery once or even a few times in their lives. These superheroes do things that are beyond a normal human capability. They do their heroic actions in a way that normal humans just cannot do. And on top of that, their powers are greater and more exceptional than a normal human being could have. And as noted earlier, they use their superhuman powers to always do good. So apparently there's a difference between a hero and a superhero, and a difference between a human superhero and a movie superhero. Uh, why am I talking about superheroes? Was I not supposed to be talking about how to get our energy back, how to get the oomph back in our step after 2020? Well, what if, what if I told you that by the very description of a movie superhero, that you could be one? What if I told you that you could possess superhuman powers beyond normal human beings to accomplish good deeds and fight evil forces, just like the movie characters? Would that put the oomph back, the energy back, the excitement back into your life? Well, I hope so, because you can. It's true. And no, you do not have to buy a cape or wear spandex. Please, please, whatever you do, do not wear spandex. It's but what I'm saying is true, and I can prove it to you. Did you know that the Bible calls Christians superheroes? Did you know that? We're called superheroes. Do you know where that is? Have you seen it? Do you remember seeing it? No? Did you miss that one? Well, to be honest and to be fair, you kind of have to look up in the Greek to understand, but it is true. We are called superheroes, and I'm going to show it to you. In the Greek, the language of the New Testament, there is a word that is pronounced, hooper nikaio. Hooper nikaio. I love it. It sounds good. I love speaking the Greek. It kind of rolls. Repeat it. Repeat it with me. Just feel how it sounds. Hooper nikaio. Yeah. Yeah. It means to be a super conqueror, a super champion, a super fighter that wins in decisive victory. Hooper Nakayo is not someone who fails. It's not someone who loses a battle. It's a super victor. In today's language, a super hero. It makes sense. And I'm certain that the word would, would have been used as superhero if they had the word hero, superhero, in 
the Greek at that time. But they described everything about a superhero by using the words super champion, super conqueror, super victor. Now, where is it we find ourselves called superheroes? Well, we can read it first the way we've been reading it as Paul wrote it in Romans 38, 37. But we're going to read 35 and 37 just to give a bit of context. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? No, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. More than conquerors. Hooper Nakayo. We are more than superheroes through Christ who loved us. We are the decisive victors, the super champions, the superheroes. And that is what the Bible calls us. And if the Bible says it's true, it's true. We can believe it. So, if, if we're called superheroes, then we must have the characteristics of a superhero. And so let's go through the four things that I outlined earlier of the superhero, and let's see how we line up. Number one, superheroes get their superhuman power from an outside source. Superman got his from our sun, Spider-Man got his from a radioactive spider, and we get our superpowers through God, through his Holy Spirit. These powers are beyond anything the world could produce. The power cannot be manufactured. Its strength is beyond anything this world could possibly give us. It's only through God that we can have this power, which is a power stronger than a nuclear blast. That's the power of a superhero. I'm not getting the feeling that you believe me. I don't know. <laughs> Nobody's getting excited yet. Okay, so let's look at Ephesians 1, 18 to 20. I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which he's called you, the riches of his glorious inheritance in his holy people, and his incomparably great power for us who believe that power is the same as the mighty strength he exerted when he raised Christ from the dead. The Amplified Version kind of gives a little bit more of an understanding, maybe a little bit more input into the, the verse itself. Let's read that. And I pray that the eyes of your heart, the very center and core of your being, may be enlightened, flooded with the light of the Holy Spirit, so that you will know and cherish the hope the divine guarantee, the confident expectation to which he's called you, the riches of his glorious inheritance in the saints, God's people. And so you will begin to know what the immeasurable and unlimited and surpassing greatness of his active spiritual power is in us who believe. These are in accordance with the working of his mighty strength, which he produced in Christ when he raised him from the dead. Are you starting to get it? Paul's saying in this verse, he wants a light bulb to go on for us. We need to understand and know with all our heart, with the eyes of faith, and with every molecule within us, that the power and strength produced by God to raise Jesus from the dead is the same power and the same strength that's in us who believe in him. And would it surprise you to know that science is starting to find hard scientific evidence that Jesus rose from the dead? Physicists are discovering and now starting to understand the science around the resurrection. One physicist in particular has gone so far as to compare the resurrection process to the creation of the universe when something was created out of nothing. That's bigger than a nuclear blast. That is power. So think about it. Scientists are saying that the power to create the universe from nothing is the same power used in the resurrection of Jesus. And that is the same power the Bible says is in us who believe. This is incredible. And this should get us excited. Number two, superheroes use their superhuman powers and strength to win battles over evil forces. They never give up and they always do good. Now, this incredible power that I was speaking of and have been speaking of was realized by the apostles and disciples of Jesus. 
They understood that what was given to them was to be used to accomplish God's will, God's purpose for their life, and to further God's kingdom on this earth. They couldn't misuse it. While Jesus is the greatest superhero, the apostles were aware that they too had the power given to them by him. So what did these superheroes do with these powers? They did what superheroes do. They fought evil powers that were always coming against them. They did good deeds. They helped people. They saved people. These were normal human beings, just like you and me. They weren't some kind of special people. They were special in the fact they had faith and they were obedient. But these were normal people. There was a doctor. There was a tax collector. There were fishermen. They were like you and me. These normal human beings healed the sick. They caused paralyzed and lame to walk. They healed those with diseases, and they raised people from the dead. They freed people from demonic possession. They experienced the power of God around them and through them. Some were freed from prison by angels, and others were taken by the Spirit from one location to another in an instant. Peter walked on water with Jesus. Okay, who does that? Who walks on water? That is a superhero thing to do. And Jesus gave him that power in that moment for a purpose. And that purpose was to build their faith. And that purpose is so that we have our faith built as well today, in this day. And it's by that same faith that same power is in us. And I can tell you, if Christ wanted you to walk on water today, you would do it. We've learned to use our powers to fight evil forces to do good. We don't give up. We don't lose. And this is what superheroes do. Number three, superheroes have special outfits and weapons. Okay. I just want to thank God right now that when we became superheroes as Christians, that we didn't have to wear a cape or spandex. I just, I just want to thank God, because I am really grateful that we don't have to wear that stuff. Because God has given us an outfit, a spiritual outfit to wear. It's a spiritual armor that we have to put on every day. So let's take a look at it. Ephesians 6, 14 to 18. This is the armor, this is the protective outfit that God has given us. He's given us the belt of truth around our waist. This is God's truth. This is not man's truth. This is not our own truth as we understand it. This is the standard that God goes by, that we must go by. We have the breastplate of righteousness upon us in place. This breastplate of righteousness is not self-righteousness. It's not the righteousness of the world around us. It's not what what man has told us. It changes all the time what's right and what's wrong. Our feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. Our feet have the shoes of the gospel of peace. We must wear this peace. It's found in the Philippians 4. You should read it. It's a peace that's supernatural. And we take this peace wherever we go. This peace that's upon our feet leaves an imprint wherever we go. The imprint is the sign of the cross. In addition to this, we take up the shield of faith that extinguishes the fiery or flaming arrows of the evil one. That shield, that supernatural shield, it protects us. It's our faith in God. It protects us from all those things that the enemy throws at us, those darts of shame and, and, and the things from our past that, that come back to, to haunt us, the things that we do or don't do, the enemy wants to destroy us. And he uses these spiritual flaming darts or arrows to do it. Then we take the helmet of salvation, which protects our mind from the chaos of the world around us and, and helps us to keep our mind in place and not be swayed around and tossed around. And now, the weapons. These are spiritual weapons that God gives us the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God, and prayer. That we are to pray in the Spirit on all occasions, all kinds of prayers and requests, and to pray 
for the Lord's people. We go into spiritual battle every day, and we have to be equipped with the armor, the defense against the attack, and the, using the spiritual weapons that the Lord has given us. We do not fight against flesh and blood. We do not fight against flesh and blood. We have a spiritual battle, a spiritual war against evil powers and principalities and authorities of this world around us. You see, you and I are powerful forces used by God in the physical and spiritual realms. And the battles we win in the spiritual manifest in the victories in the physical. And we need to see, again with the eyes of faith, that we have the power to fight the spirit of temptation, the power to fight the spirit of fear, the power to ward off and put out those fiery darts of the enemy. We have the power to bring the wisdom of God to a world in confusion and the power to do right when everyone else is doing the opposite. We have the power to focus on the positives in a world of negatives and the power to take on the mind of Christ. We have the power to send demons packing and the power to speak life and not death. The power to heal and the power to overcome events and situations with superhuman, supernatural peace. We have been called as Christians on special missions to do special tasks. Things that allow us to access the powers that Jesus has for us. And if we're obedient and faithful, nothing is going to stop us. Jesus said in John 14, 12, Very truly I tell you, whoever believes in me will do the works I have been doing, and they will do even greater things than these because I'm going to the Father. These words are a really strong encouragement to us today. And if Jesus said it, we can believe it. But until we see who we are, we're going to, but it's not in our best interest, and it's not God's best for us to refuse to live in obedience. And one day we're going to realize, if we don't do what God asks us, that we're going to be missing those blessings. We've missed the blessings of obedience. Being obedient is always a spiritual battle. Lastly, Number four, superheroes never die or they don't stay dead. Well, this is a part that I really want to look at. You see, Jesus is our ultimate superhero because of who he is and what he's done for us. In the Garden of Eden, mankind messed God. And from that moment on, sin entered the world and was passed down to every generation and to every one of us. And you know it's there. It's like it's in our our very DNA. We struggle to do good. We struggle to do the right thing. We struggle not to sin every day. We are so far away from the good and perfect human beings that were in the Garden of Eden that we don't deserve to go to heaven. And there's so much wrong with us that we could never attain heaven no matter what we could try to do. It would be like a man charged with a crime, a serious crime, standing before a judge, knowing there is nothing he could say in his defense because he knows he's guilty and he knows he deserves a lifetime in jail or a death sentence. But Jesus came to this earth full God and full man to save us from that penalty. And he went to the cross willingly to pay for the sins of each of us, to take the punishment for our sins. After three days, he rose and he lives. And because he lives, he offers us eternal life with him who believe in him. If you're watching this live stream or on YouTube and have not asked Jesus into your life, today is the perfect opportunity to take, to do that. Jesus wants us to pray to him, to accept him into our lives, to trust him. And if you do this, please let us know by texting a number that will be on the screen. Text the, text the word accept and maybe your first name so that we can make contact with you and that we can support you in this new life. It's a simple action, a simple prayer, and a life changed forever. Because once you believe in Jesus and you live for him, you will live eternally for him. Superheroes don't die. They don't stay dead. Now, this message was intentionally written 
so that we can see who we are in Jesus. And through faith in him, through surrender to him, we can be like him. And that is what every Christian wants to be. We want to be like Jesus. And being like Jesus is what gives us the energy. It gives us the excitement for life. It gives us that oomph that we've been missing, that, that zip to our step. And Jesus is looking for the faithful. He wants to use us to change this world and to do all the things that superheroes do, like him. And the world is looking for superheroes. That's why there's such an interest in them. And that's why people spend so much money on movies and books and comics and toys about them. The world is really looking for Jesus, the ultimate superhero, and you and I have an amazing opportunity every day to show them the way. Now, I want to wrap up this message with the words of Jesus to us in Luke 10, 19. I have given you authority to trample on snakes and scorpions and to overcome all the power of the enemy. Nothing will harm you. If that doesn't sound like a superhero, I don't know what does. Are you excited? Are you excited today? I hope so. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, thank you for allowing us to see who we are in you. Thank you, Lord, for giving us such power, such great power. Lord, help us today to grasp hold of what this means and what you have for us and how, how to be obedient to you. Thank you, Lord, for what you're doing and what you're going to do. In Jesus' name. Thank you so much for being with us today. We value your time and we appreciate you investing it with us, whether you've joined us in person or online. Thank you. I want to return to something we said that we would discuss at the very beginning of the service, and that is our Connect card. Online, you can access ways to do each of them, to come to different activities of the church, to connect to different people or connect differently to God than you have, to commit to learning more from God's Word or to serving other people and to begin to care for the people around you. There are pathways to each of those things on this card. So I'd ask you to take a moment to look over the card and see if there's anything that you want to commit to, any step you want to take today. And if there's not, that's absolutely fine, but we'd certainly appreciate at the bottom there if you could add any comments that you have for us, or if you have a prayer request that we could join you in prayer for, We'd be so happy to do that. Just fill that in. So I'll give you a moment with the card. When our service is finished, those of you completing it in person can drop it off on your way out. If you're filling it out electronically, you can do that at any time after you watch our main service. So thank you again for being with us today. Thank you for spending this time. And may God bless you in the days ahead. Well, if you have any questions about today's message, you can text the same number that was on the screen, and Pastor Norm will give me the questions, and I will um, maybe give the answers through Pastor Norm next week, because he's going to be he's going to be preaching next week. So, I just want to bless you, bless you this week. I want to just encourage you to know who you are in Jesus, to realize that you have the power of Christ and the resurrection inside you, and that nothing's going to stop you. Be obedient to Jesus. Have fun being a superhero this week. Amen. You never change, no matter the time. You are good to me. Every day gets sweeter. Every day gets better. Every day gets sweeter. Every day gets better, every day gets sweeter, every day gets better, every day gets sweeter, every day gets better.
In every hour, in every 